So we're on the drive up to Mount Wilson because we're doing a workshop with Dave Rowe, Russ Janae, and Rachel Freed on some astro research topics. It's going to be really neat. We're going to jump up, use the 60-inch telescope up there. Amazing historic site, and it's awesome because next year we get to do a one-meter installation up here at Mount Wilson. But let's go ahead, enjoy the rest of the view, and get up to the observatory. My name is Tim Thompson. I'm a member of the Board of Trustees of the Mount Wilson Institute. I'm a docent and session director for Mount Wilson Observatory, and I've been here now for 40 years. Behind me is the 100-inch telescope, also known as the Hooker Telescope, named after John Hooker, who paid $15,000 for the mirror, and you get your name on things when you pay for them. The telescope was completed in 1917. The telescope itself was made at the Fall River Shipyards in Massachusetts. The dome was made by the Morava Steel Company in Chicago. And this is the telescope that Edwin Hubble used beginning about 1923 to observe variable stars in what we now call galaxies, but they called spiral nebula to solve the problem of what the spiral nebula actually were, which was a matter of considerable debate in the 1920s and before. And Hubble settled that debate by finding Cepheid class variables, starting with M31, the Andromeda galaxy, and a number of other galaxies. And he used the period luminosity relationship for Cepheids which had been discovered by Henrietta Leavitt at Harvard College Observatory in 1912, and calibrated in 1913 by Einar Hertzsprung. Hubble used that method to derive distances to the galaxies and prove that they were, in fact, hundreds of thousands and millions of light years away. His initial distance to M31 was around 900,000 light years. We now know it's about two and a half million light years, but it should come as no surprise that we know a lot now that Hubble did not know 80 or 100 years ago. Uh, the telescope behind me is a scaled up optical copy of the 60 inch telescope on what's called an English yoke mount. So the gray bar running this way is parallel to the spin axis of the Earth. If you turn the telescope around that axis, you match the motion of the sky. A single motor will do that for you. And the other axis of the telescope perpendicular to that is this way. And so by rotating this way or this way, you can point the telescope to whatever point in the sky you need to point it to. Hi, I'm Pat Boyce. Uh, I'm the executive director for the Boyce Research Initiatives and Education Foundation, also known as Boyce Astro. And we uh, have been in operation as a nonprofit for since 2013 with uh, bringing students uh, and even adults to uh, enjoy astronomy science. And today we, we've, we've had over 500 students, uh, over 50 scientific papers written, 
and we now have two observatories, one in uh, both plane wave and one outside of San Diego and one at Sierra Remote Observatory. Here we're doing speckle interferometry and that's what we do as well in our observatories, uh, which allows you to separate very close double stars and some other interesting things. We also do a lot of exoplanet observations and work with NASA on those and introduce our students to both NASA and writing scientific research papers. I'm Rachel Fried and we're here with the Institute for Student Astronomical Research and we have a number of schools up here at Mount Wilson using the 60-inch telescope to do speckle interferometry of close double stars. Now these students have all participated in a little bit of double star research using regular CCD cameras on remote telescopes, but now they get to come up and sort of do real hands-on work with the big telescope. Um, and then they're going to write up their results for publication in the Journal of Double Star Observations. And uh, it's exciting because we have three different schools tonight, two different schools over the next couple of nights, um, and we're sort of building these collaborative teams of students from different parts of California and Washington, actually. So getting students to know other students and work together, and it's really exciting. David Rowe and I'm the CTO of Plane Wave Instruments and my role there is um, optical design and um, mechanical design and to make beautiful highly functional telescopes. So we're here at Mount Wilson this week at the uh, famous 60-inch telescope. This is one of the places where human beings really discovered the universe. Um, the telescope here was commissioned in 1908 and we learned our place in the universe uh, by eventually taking photographs here. So we're back here this week doing speckle interferometry and that is to se separate very very close double stars. And when the when the uh, light propagates through the atmosphere, it gets um, very distorted. And you can't separate double stars, you can't make measurements. So we have a technique where we take images, uh, a lot of images, like often a thousand images, and we do a bunch of um, signal processing on those images. And we end up with a very clear image of a double star, and we can measure the separation and we can measure um, other things about the double star, like the color temperatures of the two stars involved. We can do photometry. And that's very useful for the people who st study uh, stellar dynamics. Stellar dynamics is two stars orbiting each other. And we would like to know um, how those stars evolved. And by having a pair of stars, uh, we can do a lot of interesting calculations. We can measure the mass of the two stars and therefore the stellar dynamicists can tell a lot about the evolutionary history of those stars. So we learn a huge amount about um, the universe uh, by doing this and we play a small role in that and it's a, quite a beautiful thing. <laughs> 